The asset management industry saw the first reversal last year after a decade of AUM growth. There's now renewed focus on driving down costs and improving the way customers are serviced. And joining us to look at whether asset managers are leading the way in disrupting the post-trade ecosystem is Sumitra Karthikeyan, partner and managing director at the Boston Consulting Group. Welcome to Cybos TV, Sumitra. Thank you very much. And then take us through the key trends in asset management industry over the past year. What are they? What have they been? Yeah, so... Um, you, you mentioned it, right? What is very interesting is after um, almost 10 years of continuous growth, AUM is down for the first time. Uh, and then cost, on the other hand, has gone up, especially in the regulatory and technology space. The asset managers continue to get pricing pressure from their own client base, both retail and institutional investors. So you put all of that together, clearly there is margin pressure. And that is, uh, I would say, one of the top things uh, that asset managers are facing. The second interesting trend that we see is um, there's somewhat of a pronounced bifurcation of what the winning models look like. On the one hand, we see very large um, asset managers, those with one trillion plus in AUM, uh, becoming uh, bigger and bigger, attracting most of the flows, and they are the distribution powerhouses and, and really driven by scale. And on the other side of the spectrum, you see the smaller asset managers less than about 100 billion in AUM, uh, who are extremely focused and um, are very, very performance driven. And it's the middle that really seems to be uh, struggling. And, and so that's another trend that we're seeing that has implications for both this industry and the service providers. You're painting a picture a little bit already, but what are the, what are the pressures really facing the industry at this moment? Um, so depending on the type of player you are, overarching there is pricing pressure. Um, as uh, investment returns um, uh, are a challenge, um, the industry has to invent new pricing mechanisms. Uh, and um, there is an increasing flow towards passives, which, which are priced very, very low, uh, sometimes very close to zero. Um, but depending on how big or how focused you are, uh, the challenge could be either how do you personalize your investment uh, to your investors? Um, how do you become more digital, which is how investors want to consume the products and services? Uh, or how do you use data and analytics to drive better performance um, you know, using the, the latest that technology can provide to you? Okay, then, so given all of these factors, what, I what impact are these trends actually having on, on the post-trade industry? Because clearly, they're wrestling with these unexpected dynamics, especially on the model itself and that squeezed middle that you identified earlier. Right. Um, the squeezed uh, middle is, a, is an important piece of it because uh, they tend to be a large part of the customer base for the security service providers. Uh, even though they have declining revenue, they're still a big part of the AUM. So the security service providers have to figure out what are different business models that they can serve this middle with because clearly it is about bringing down cost. It is about being able to serve them in a high touch way, but not necessarily in an expensive Way. Uh, and then if you look at it from a data perspective, the richness of data that security services uh, providers sit on uh, makes it very, very attractive for asset managers to um, help leverage the data for, for their investment decisions. So how the data is collected, how is it housed, and how it is provided back to their client base is a big uh, and rich opportunity area. So how are post-trade firms coping with these changes? What are they doing differently? Um, so a number of things. I, I think, firstly, of course, everybody has the short-term margin pressure. Uh, so how, especially when the revenue pool is shrinking and you have pricing pressure, how do you really fundamentally change your cost structure to be uh, profitable and pass on the benefits to your clients? Um, Apart from that, I think uh, different players are looking at different strategies to differentiate themselves. Um, so some of the firms are going after um, front to back integration in the value chain. Um, others are looking at more uh, open banking architecture where they can provide the best of breed uh, and not necessarily have to provide it themselves, but partner with others in the ecosystem. Uh, Others, uh, especially when they're part of the universal bank uh, architecture, are looking to bring the best of the bank uh, so that they can provide end-to-end -end services to, the, to their clients. Um, and some of the technology firms are looking at which areas are high growth where they can focus uh, and, and win in the long run. So diverging um, 
uh, strategies is something that we are seeing in the in the industry more recently. Which it's really been forced on them, obviously by circumstances largely beyond their control. But as an example of adapting to these changes, what about the role of APIs between asset managers and post trade service providers? I think API is a great uh, example of um, exactly how do you fundamentally change your cost structure, but also uh, differentiate yourself in the services you provide. Uh, API allows you to provide data in a very real-time dynamic fa fashion in the most granular way that the asset managers want it in. Uh, so service providers who are able to set up APIs uh, differentiate themselves uh, to, to their client base. And at the same time, bring down the cost because things that were being done manually or on a repetitive basis can now be done much more efficiently through technology. Who would you say is in the best position at the moment to take advantage of the opportunities in this changing landscape? Yeah, um, look, this is obviously a, a um, you know obvious answer uh, that the one who's prepared the most is best positioned to take advantage. But that being said, uh, it is a challenge to have uh, to meet short-term financial goals while also investing for the medium turn, how do you balance those priorities and how do you do it in a way that in the medium term you are coming up with products and services that are innovative, that are diversified away from what you're doing currently, uh, is, is I think going to tell the winners from the not, not so winning firms. <laughs> That's a very polite way of saying yeah. the losers. But let's project ahead now, if we can, and look ahead specifically to, to five years' time. From your perspective, as somebody who understands this industry, I mean, how do you think the security services industry will actually look? Because they find themselves in quite an extraordinary position at yeah. the moment. It's not going to endure. Mm -hmm. But five years' time, what kind of an industry will we be talking about? Yeah. I actually have a very positive outlook on that because um, this is definitely uh, a time for tremendous change and firms will be forced to um, accost the change and, and do something about it. Um, I think five years from now, you will see an industry that's far more technology driven than it is today. It already is to a certain degree, but I think that will accelerate tremendously over time. Uh, you will see an industry where there is revenue diversification away from the core, and when that needs to happen, uh, the only way it happens is through innovation. So you're going to see a lot more innovation in that space. Um, and the fundamentals of this industry have always been very attractive uh, in terms of uh, return on equity. Uh, so I do see a pretty vibrant industry with probably um, you know fewer players and some new players. I don't think the exact same number of players will exist, but it'll be a stronger and much more robust industry. Okay, so turbulence now, but there's a there's a rainbow at the end. <laughs> something, exactly. Something Dimitra, it we look forward to catching up with you in another five years <laughs> on Cybos TV <laughs> and see how many of those predictions actually come to pass. Samita Kathakari, <laughs> partner <laughs> and managing director at the Boston <laughs> Consulting Group. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs>